Hi everyone. So I have a review, demo, swatches, all the good stuff on the new ColourPop foundation. This is the No Filter Foundation. What I'm wearing today is Fair 05. I also picked up Fair 15, which is um, a little bit deeper, but also kind of that yellow-based color. So I am going to insert a demo of me applying it. I'm going to show kind of a zoomed in level of what it looks like after I applied it after and also after I powdered it. Um, and I'm hoping to also include just kind of a, a wear test check in a few times to show you how it's looking. I have worn this a few different ways, applied a few different ways over top a diff few different combinations of skincare and primers. And I have some thoughts and um, I just uh, wanted to share these with you. I was super excited about this foundation launch and I placed my order at like 101. It was like a minute after they had launched. So I was super, super excited. They shipped it out really fast, which was awesome. Um, they accidentally sent me one wrong item that was not in the foundation line and I contacted them and they got back to me the next day, said that they would be sending out the replacement as soon as they could that, you know, because they've had a lot of launches lately, it may be delayed, but they said that also about the foundation order and it came through really fast. So just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what, um, you know, the ordering process was with them. I have ordered many, many times from ColourPop and it's always been a good experience. Um, so yeah, I could definitely recommend placing orders with them. So for reference, my skin tone is around NC5 and MAC terms. Um, the lightest shade of a lot of foundation lines is not light enough for me. A good color match for me is the Cover FX uh, Natural Finish Foundation in N0. And I also have their Power Play Foundation in N0, which has a little bit less yellow in it. So it's similar, I would say, to the ColourPop and Fair 05. Um, I will include swatches comparing this to the Fenty, Cover FX, um, some drugstore options that are very fair, just to give you an idea of what it looks like in comparison to those other shades. It is very light. It is probably on par with my lightest foundations um, that I use. So I'll go ahead and insert the swatches now. All right, I have a lot of swatches for you guys. Um, I just wanted to include some drugstore and high-end and things that are yellow-toned, things that uh, the ColourPop uh, Foundation Fighter references. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, ColourPop No Filter Concealer in Fair 02. ColourPop No Filter Foundation in Fair 05. Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation in 100. ColourPop No Filter Foundation in Fair 15. Maybelline Fit Me Foundation Matte and Poreless in 110. ColourPop No Filter Concealer in Fair 06. L'Oreal True Match uh, Foundation in W1 Porcelain. Maybelline Superstay Foundation in 102 Fair Porcelain. Cover FX. Uh, Power Play Foundation in N0. Rimmel Lasting Finish Breathable Foundation in 081 Fair Ivory. Cover FX Lasting, no, Cover FX Natural Finish Foundation in N0. NARS Sheer Glow in Siberia. Eden Minerals Nordic Veil vale in Joran. So as far as the colors go, I feel like the comparison shades that they gave for Fair 05 and Fair 15 on their site were spot on. Um, the difference between the Fenty in 100 and the Fair 05 from ColourHop is really minor. I would say they're similar lightness and it's just like a tiny undertone difference. I feel like the Fenty is a little tiny bit less yellow and a little bit more peach in undertone. It's, um, I think it's supposed to be a true neutral shade, whereas the, um, the ColourPop has just kind of very subtle yellow undertones to my eye. And as far as the Fit Me Matte and Poreless 110 and the ColourPop um, No Filter in Fair 15, I feel like they're 
just about the same color. I think that the that comparison is right on. So as far as lightness goes, I feel like this uh, the Fair 05 shade is the lightest drugstore option that I have encountered with exception of the model's own. Um, they have the Runway Foundation, which I never use because it looks terrible on my skin. It's not usable in my mind. The model zone is also very light, but it is a little bit more of a peachy undertone versus yellow. And unfortunately I cannot get that model zone um, runway foundation to work on my face. So if you are looking for a matte uh, drugstore, extremely fair option, this is another thing to try out. The model zone runway in What's the name on this one? Porcelain, 01. So a couple things I wanted to say about the packaging before I forget. Um, after pumping out all these swatches with the products that have pumps, the pump on this, not good. It feels very cheap, it sounds cheap, it's got like you can hear the spring in there, and I have had zero luck getting anything other than basically a full pump out of it. You can't really control it. Um, a pump that I think is really nice on a drugstore foundation, Maybelline Superstay pump is awesome. You can get a tiny amount on this. It's not a struggle. You don't feel like, you know, you slip for a second and you're going to get a full pump. Really nice on this. There are similar price points, so I do wish that ColourPop had gotten a better pump. So having that really kind of runny consistency and the pump that doesn't you don't have much control over it. It's just, it's a tricky combination and I do wish that they had gotten a nicer pump for us. So that's kind of a bummer. It is cheap, but it's not that cheap, you know? And I'm going to just kind of uh, go over my thoughts, I think after later on in the day, just because I need to go take care of my two and a half year old and the baby's gonna may or may not be up soon and I kind of want to get us to Target if that could possibly happen to buy some sunscreen. We'll see. So anyway, I'm going to continue this later, probably with a different lip color on. Probably my face is not gonna look this good, so <laughs> we'll see. All right, it's been about five hours since I originally put the foundation on and I have some thoughts and this pretty much lines up to what my experience has been the past several days as I've been testing it. Around four to five hours, I start having issues. So the first day that I wore it, I did my regular skincare routine. I applied it with a beauty blender and then I did not set it with any powder. And it was very shiny on my T-zone straight away. And around the four or five, six hour mark, somewhere around there, it started getting really patchy, just breaking down everywhere. It looked really bad. So I took it off and I then put only this on. This was the only thing I put on. It's the Cover FX Clear Cover um, SPF 30. So it's basically like a primer with a SPF in it. So I did a full pump of the primer with SPF. This has a nice like silicone kind of glide to it. It dries down. It doesn't feel as slippery as something like the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer, but it's kind of similar. Um, and I find that for me it doesn't ball up, which the Murad Invisiblur Primer sometimes can if I put it all over my face. I just don't like the texture of that one, and this one I feel like it feels a little bit more like skincare as opposed to just like a straight silicone primer. So I did just this primer, no other skincare underneath, and I was able to apply it with this Artiste brush. Um, it is the Oval 8. And it went on really smoothly, surprisingly. I have a great difficulty putting things on with brushes, but it did go over that this primer really quite nicely. And then I also set it with a powder. I think I did the uh, Laura Mercier uh, Loose Setting Powder in Translucent. And around that kind of five hour mark, I noticed that it was starting to settle into my lines and just 
it just started moving around a little bit. It was much better having set it with a primer. I feel like it was starting to kind of move around, break up a little bit faster being over this style of primer. My skin is oily in the T-zone and dry in pretty much all the other spots. And I have a little dermatitis around my nose and underneath my lip that sometimes will peel. Um, depending on certain products I'm using, like some foundations make that peel more than others. Uh, so far I haven't had any sort of peeling type reaction from the ColourPop foundation, which is nice. I feel like the finish I got was really nice with this combo. It, I didn't use a lot of product. It felt like it spread out nicely. I was able to get an even thin layer and it wasn't sinking into my pores. It wasn't like catching weirdly. It would just looked really smooth and nice. So I think the finish so far was probably the best of with this. Now this morning I did my regular skincare routine and I tried applying it with the brush and it was a mess. It looked okay. I might have some footage of this. It looked okay on one side, but then when I tried to do my nose and the this side of my face for whatever reason, makeup will sink and in, settle into the pores in this area of my face on this side specifically way more. And it just, it like wouldn't stick to certain areas and it was clinging to other areas. I tried to fix it with a beauty blender. It just wasn't working. And I may be able to show some, a little bit of a, a clip of me trying to smooth it out um, on my upper lip this morning when I had my regular skincare and was trying to use the Artiste brush. And it was really weird. It just like, I tried to move the product and it like, gripped on in certain spots and then slid in other spots and just showed this weird like patchy cakey craziness. So what I have found is that I really can't touch this after I've applied it or it just gets worse. It, it, whenever I try to fix it, it just looks worse. So I took off all of my makeup this morning and thought, okay, I'm gonna try just a couple skincare items, apply it with the Beauty Blender, set it with a Maybelline loose uh, powder, the Fit Me loose powder. And so that's the demo that I'm showing you today in its entirety. Um, I had a little bit of an issue where it seemed like it didn't wanna stick to my nose um, and I wasn't getting as much coverage over this cheek so I was able to build it up a little in those spots and I think it looks okay. Um, I did go for a little bit more coverage than I would normally wear, just trying to get like an even amount because I feel like I got a good amount on this side and then the side it was kind of lacking. You could really see like the redness in my cheek coming through. So I was just trying to even it out, but I feel like I ended up with a little bit more makeup on my face than I would normally do. And my skin just doesn't seem to, it doesn't carry makeup very well. So I think that just about any foundation starts to look a little bit heavy and a little weird and obvious um, and just makeup-y if I'm not careful, if I can't do really thin layers. So if I wanna get more coverage, I really need to have something that has more pigmentation so I can have a thin layer and then not have to do any more. So I was able to build it up, but it, it's definitely looking kind of makeup-y, especially like around the mouth area, um, in around the crease of my nose and that kind of thing. Um, I think from a distance, it looks fine. The other issue that I have um, that kind of ties into what I was talking about before is that as I showed in the close up now in this check in was that it has settled into these lines. It settled pretty badly into this one where it's just like the product kind of vacated the area around it. So I had kind of almost blank spots next to where it had settled into that line. So I have some issues with foundation settling into my lines, but usually I can just kind of pat them out. Some foundations don't settle into my lines at all, which is, you know, ideal. Um, but normally it's not a huge deal if it does. I can just kind of press that area and it will smooth it out, take away any excess product. So when I applied it, I saw that it was settling into my line. So I did set it with a powder with the Maybelline Fit Me powder with my sponge. 
Now the problem is, is a problem I have sometimes under my eyes, those lines, it settles after I've already set it and then it's like set into that line. So I tried to smooth it out with my finger, it would not budge. I tried gently tapping over with the Beauty Blender and that made it worse. It started lifting up the product underneath, so I tried to just stop. If I, this is not one of those foundations where when you get oily, you can just kind of smooth things out before you do your blotting sheet because anytime I've tried to do that, it has just instantly looked so bad. So that's kind of frustrating if you're oily, you know. A lot of times if you blot right away without kind of smoothing everything out again, it can look a little patchy, but since you're so oily, it's like it's made that product a little bit loose and you can kind of get it back looking smoother, then blot and then it will look pretty good, you know, like you actually fixed it. Um, and it's a little, a little frustrating that this doesn't let you do that in addition to the fact that it does kind of, it seems like it's starting to break down a little faster than a lot of other foundations I have. I did have a little lifting on my chin where some product transferred. I had my three month old baby sitting kind of on my chest and his little clammy feet were kicking my face a little bit um, before I realized I was trying to do a foundation <laughs> test. And so I did notice a little kind of patchiness on my chin. And it also looks a little cakey where I have that dermatitis, just in that kind of crease underneath my lip. So yeah, um, in general, everything else I think looks okay. It, on my dry areas, I think it looks fine. Um, on my forehead, I think it looks fine. It's just the my real problem areas are the pores around my face, the lines around my chin in general, around my mouth in general, and kind of around my nose. And I think that setting it with this powder, it stays really nicely. Um, it definitely increases the longevity for me, but I'm still having some problems getting it to look good. I will say that I didn't really set my cheeks and they still feel a little tacky and it feels like a formula that's gonna lift off. So I don't like to set my cheeks because they are quite dry, um, but I would consider maybe doing a little bit more, actually using like a brush and trying to kind of press in the powder a little, just because I really dislike that stickiness and my hair will actually stick to my face whenever my foundation is a little tacky and that will make my face itchy you know and then if I go to scratch it it's going to take foundation off so I, I really don't like a, a real tacky finish and I feel like this is definitely tacky and I didn't use any extra moisturizer I use the same kind of setup I would for any other foundation just because my cheeks need extra moisture that my t-zone doesn't so if I do uh, do another check-in, I'll go ahead and include it now. Okay, so this is the last time I'm gonna check in. It's been a, almost 11 hours. And it's I did spend a little time, like maybe about 45 minutes outside. It was about 80 degrees and a bit humid, not terrible. And um, I was feeling a little sweaty, but not super sweaty. And, um, but I was definitely feeling like the oil was happening so I'll just zoom you in and show you what's happening here so if you can see on my chin it's starting to break down on my upper lip area it's, it seems to be the worst here it just does not sit on that part of my skin very well my cheeks which are dry look good my highlight is still totally on. Um, I'm a little shiny, but not super shiny. So one thing I am thinking about is just testing a little bit more with a more silicone based primer and trying to kind of cut down on the skincare I do to really isolate what it is that's making it kind of break up in a, in a patchy way. And I'm curious how it would wear for like a full day over something like this. So that's probably what I'm going to test next. So would I recommend it? it? It's tough. I think that if you're looking for something extremely fair, 
even if you just bought the foundation and paid shipping, it's still going to be cheaper than most of the other extremely fair options out there. Um, if your skin is normal to dry, I have a feeling it might wear pretty well. Kathleen Lights, who has uh, dry skin, did have issues with it, like fading away from her chin. Um, so I'm not really sure, you know, what's going on with that. I also don't know why it wears so funny on me as well. So, um, I do, you know, I am kind of encouraged by how well it wears like on my cheeks. It doesn't feel drying or uncomfortable. Um, and I just do my kind of regular amount of moisturizer that I do for all of my foundations on my dry spots. So I feel like uh, the question is whether or not it would work on more oily skin types. My, my T-zone is really solidly moderately oily right now. Um, it's not extremely oily like it has been in the past. So yeah, I, I don't know if you have like all over oily skin how this is gonna work for you. But again, um, I often encounter issues with things wearing away in a patchy way on my chin, so it may not be an indicator of this formula. It may just be my face and the oil that my face produces. So I think that's all I wanna go over. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and if you plan on picking it up or if you already have picked it up. Um, how it worked for you, what color you got, what um, other foundations work well for you. That would be super helpful if you could share the, that information in the comments. If you'd like to see more videos from me and you aren't already, please do subscribe. I will include links to my foundation playlist, which has lots of swatches and reviews and demos um, and concealer playlist. So include a link to my blog post, which will have the swatch that I included in this video the the mini swatches, as well as um, links to some other foundation swatch blog posts that I have out there. So hopefully all that information will be helpful for you. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.